The time is ten past eight. Two companies, one academic, our personal data and political messaging. All of that features in the story that's enveloped Cambridge Analytica and Facebook in recent days. They have something in common in both pointing the finger at one man, Dr Alexander Kogan, the academic who was the link between them. He gathered the profiles of 30 million people based on their Facebook data and had a commercial arrangement with Cambridge Analytica. Facebook says that was a violation of its policies. In his first UK broadcast interview, Dr Kogan, who's employed in Cambridge University's psychology department, has accused both companies of scapegoating him. When we spoke last night, he told me first about Facebook apps and the one he designed based around establishing people's personalities. The way it works is users go and authorize each app to access certain data. So things are very public about you, such as your name, age and gender, and then certain things that maybe just your friends can see, such as your page likes, your wall posts and your pictures. And so our app was kind of on the lighter side in terms of the things we collect, which we just wanted the public information. And the other thing that at that time the app allowed us to do is to collect similar data about your friends whose privacy settings permitted this. And so we would also get name, age, gender, location of your friends. But you're a Cambridge University psychologist. What was your interest in this? I got really interested in trying to understand how we could model human behavior through social media because there's residue of who we are and everything we do. And here we had lots of little behaviors that we could use to try to understand a little bit more about who you are and a bit more nuanced. And how did you start working with Cambridge Analytica? A PhD student in the department introduced me to them, who was doing some consulting work. Initially, they just wanted me to help them with some survey consulting. And then the conversation progressed, and we started doing a project on Facebook. What sort of project? So the focus uh, of the project was on Americans, and the idea was to collect data and to make predictions or best guesses really about how they would answer certain surveys and in particular personality surveys. And this was in 2014? 2014, correct. Who approached whom? Uh, They approached me. They've said something entirely different. They have said Alexander Nix, who's now been suspended as the chief executive, says we were approached by an academic who said... He had the legitimate and legal wherewithal to collect data on Facebook users that we might be able to use. Is that correct? Uh, In my opinion, that's a fabrication. What happened was they approached me. In terms of the usage of Facebook data, they wrote the terms of service for the app. They provided the legal advice that this was all appropriate. So I'm definitely surprised by their comments, and I don't think they are accurate. And it was specific to Facebook data. Is that what they asked for? Or in any event, did they know that that's where your data was coming from? Uh, Yes, it was specifically Facebook. How did you then go about collecting it? For the app, we took the terms of service that they wrote. And to make sure it was all commercial in nature, we changed the name, the logo, things like that. And then we recruited... I think around 200,000 people through a survey company called Qualtrics. Each person was paid to do the survey and to authorize the app. And each person was presented with specific data we were going to try to collect and also a terms of service that SEL had drafted for us that detailed exactly the commercial terms of the project. So they knew that they were signing over their data for commercial purposes? Uh, That's my understanding. When you say that's your understanding, you... The terms of service were agreed between you and Cambridge Analytica. So what did they say about the commercial use of data? Yeah, so it was exactly what you said. It's that they communicated that this would be a fully commercial project and that the terms of service would be ones that allowed sort of a broad license for usage. What about the data of their friends? Uh, Same thing. I mean, it was their view that this was an appropriate project. I mean, what was communicated to me strongly is that thousands and maybe tens of thousands of apps were doing the exact same thing and that this was a pretty normal use case and a normal situation for usage of Facebook data. But the people, the Facebook users who were agreeing to let you use their data for commercial reasons, were they also agreeing to that for their friends' data? That certainly was my understanding of what was communicated to me. 
Have you not gone back and checked the details given the huge row over all of this in recent days? Yeah. So that, that is still my understanding, but the, I think the legal situation is nuanced. Um, and like, I don't want to misstate mis, uh, anything at all in terms of how the, it all works. But the, my understanding is that we were completely within the, the limits and the, the rights of the agreements that we had. And how many profiles did you end up with from those 200,000 people? In terms of data we provided to SEL, it was 30 million people, and they were all Americans based on self-report. And yeah, and so the vast majority of what we provided was just, here's the personality data for these people. And how did Cambridge Analytica use that data? Honestly, I don't know. I was never part of the subsequent process. Certainly, I've read many reports, just like everybody else has, but I have no way of actually firsthand knowing any of that. Is it possible that it was used in the American presidential election campaign? It's certainly possible, but like, I, I truly don't have any knowledge of that. So you handed it over, and you don't know what they did with it? Yeah. So there's a difference in the account that you're giving and Cambridge Analytica's account. There is also an issue, as far as you're concerned, with Facebook or they more specifically have an issue with you in that they say after you took that data from Facebook and you passed it to Cambridge Analytica, you violated their platform policies. My understanding, again, from the legal perspective is that's inaccurate. But again, I'm not a lawyer and that's just something that's a bit above my pay grade. I was following the advice I was given by Cambridge Analytica at the time that this was all appropriate and I, and I had no reason to doubt that. But it was you who was taking the data from Facebook. So what was the arrangement or the undertaking with Facebook? Certainly the app was registered under my personal profile. What we did was we gave it the name, GSR app, and we gave it a terms of service that SEL had drafted for us. And yeah. But Facebook are now saying that you violated their platform policies when you passed the information that you got from there to Cambridge Analytica. I mean, Why are you honestly, saying that's that not is, correct? I mean, like, I'm honestly stunned by most of this. This has never been my understanding. The, like, the events of the past week have been a total shell shock. And my view is that I'm being basically used as a scapegoat by both Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, when, honestly, the, we thought we were acting perfectly appropriately. We, we thought we were doing something that was really normal, and we were assured by Cambridge Analytica that like everything was perfectly legal and within the limits of the terms of service. But you're a highly knowledgeable, highly skilled person. Are you saying you totally relied on information that Cambridge Analytica gave you and didn't ask questions of yourself about this huge amount of data, 30 million profiles that you had gathered? One of the, the great mistakes I did here was I just didn't ask enough questions. I mean, I had never done a commercial project. And I had, didn't really have any reason to doubt their sincerity. That's certainly something I strongly regret now. I mean, the, you know, I was doing the project for free. I didn't have money to go get a lawyer. I would have certainly done that in retrospect. But the, You were doing the project for free? Yeah, I mean, the, my motivation was to get a data set that uh, then I could do research on. Yeah, I've never profited from this in any way, personally. Well, you were paid by Cambridge Analytica, money. weren't you? Your company was paid by Cambridge so, Analytica. So they provided resources to pay for the cost of the data collection. Which was how much? Somewhere between seven and $800,000, but a long time ago, so I'm not 100% sure, but somewhere in that range. So your company was paid close to a million dollars for its Facebook data set. Yes, but it, to, to just to be clear where this goes, this money was paid mostly to Qualtrics directly for the participants, because each person it would cost 3 to $4, and so that's where really the money went. When Alexander Nix was, uh, appeared before MPs last month, he was asked mm -hmm. about the data that came from your company, Global Science Research. He said they did some research for us back in 2014. He was asked... Did they supply you with data or information? And he said no. Is that wrong? I believe it is. Uh, I don't see why that would be accurate. And are you prepared now to appear before 
MPs in this country or indeed on Capitol Hill and talk about what you know and your version of events? Absolutely. I mean, the, throughout this whole process, I've tried to be as cooperative as possible with everybody involved as the, these things started to happen and the stories start to really blow up. I mean, we want to be part of the solution. We're as shocked as everybody else that these things have occurred. And I feel that the actions that have been taken by Cambridge Analytica, especially against me, have been extremely unfair. I think there's a really big question here in terms of how do social media platforms actually use everybody's data? Because fundamentally, the, the project that I think Cambridge Analytica has allegedly done, which is used people's Facebook data for micro-targeting, is the primary use case for most data on these platforms. Facebook's and Twitter and other platforms, they make their money through advertising. And so there's an agreement basically between the user of, hey, you will get this amazing product that costs billions of dollars to run. And in return, we can sell you uh, to advertisers for micro-targeting. Do you think you've done anything wrong? I think the only thing I really did wrong was not ask enough questions. There's nothing that I've seen that would lead me to believe there was any violation of any policies. But again, complex legal questions. And what's hurtful to me and is really frustrating for me is the anxiety and fears that people all over the world have experienced from the reporting on the story. And that's been really difficult. My research is about happy things, positive things, compassion, kindness. And so to be on the antithesis of that is really, really difficult. You say that you don't know how your data set was used. It was this large data set of Americans. If it turns out it was used in the American presidential uh, campaign, how will that make you feel? Absolutely horrible. Uh, Mr. Trump is not somebody whose values align well with mine. And at the same time, though, the, I know that it probably wasn't helpful. The, the accuracy of this data has been extremely exaggerated. In practice, my best guess is that we were six times more likely to get everything wrong about a person as we were to get everything right about a person. Like, I personally don't think micro-targeting is an effective way to use such data sets. You don't think it could sway an election? I, like, I personally don't think so. I, I, I think it could have only hurt the campaign. The Trump campaign, you mean? Yeah, uh, any campaign. I think what Cambridge Analytica has tried to sell is magic, and they've made claims that this is incredibly accurate and it tells you everything there is to tell about you, but I think the reality is it's not that. If you sit down and you really work through the st statistics and you think about what does a correlation of 0.3 means, those claims quickly fall apart. And that's something any person with a statistical background can go and do. And do you have links to Russia? There's been quite a lot said about you personally. You <laughs> hold a post at St. Petersburg University. <laughs> So this one's pretty funny. My family has found this particular angle of the story really, really humorous. Because uh, anybody that knows me knows I'm like a very happy-go-lucky, goofy guy. Last one to have any real links to espionage. So in terms of Russia, I have an honorary post there. There is a grant that was associated with some of my colleagues, and they did almost all of the work that I uh, put my name on to help them out. Look, those research grants are... Almost most research grants are given by government agencies. And so the, there's a very little nefarious about them. And the project that was done there is completely innocuous and uh, quite frankly unrelated to anything that was ever done with Cambridge Analytica. That was very much my academic career. And we kept the, the private sector aspects private and separate. Dr. Alex Kogan, thank you very much. Well, we put Dr. Kogan's version of events to Facebook and to Cambridge Analytica. Facebook insists that he had violated its platform policies by transferring the data his app collected to Cambridge Analytica. It also said he'd specifically assured Facebook that the data would never be used for commercial purposes. Cambridge Analytica did not sp respond specifically to his claims. Well, Rory Kethlin jones is our technology correspondent. Let's start, Rory, with this gap between what Dr. Kogan says and what Facebook says about whether or not there was a violation of Facebook rules, its platform policies. Now, Dr. Kogan says that these are sort of complex legal questions. Are, are they that complex? What was allowed in 2014? 
Well, I think there is there was a certain amount of uh, mystery, really, w- what was allowed uh, and what was assumed was allowed. I think what you get there from uh, Dr. Kogan is a clear impression, which I've heard from other people, that uh, everybody thought this was normal. This was just the way this worked. Uh, you know, users may not have known this, but that 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 was the deal. You uh, you got this data, you used it for all sorts of means. Obviously, Facebook says that's where the rule was breaking broken, not with him gathering the data but with him transferring it to Cambridge Analytica and it being used for commercial purposes. So do you think that this is a even a watershed moment in terms of our relationship, I mean, our relationship as users with the technology companies that hold our data, certainly in our awareness, perhaps even in our perception of them and whether they are doing good? I think it is. I mean, I think everybody has gone along with this bargain that, that the industry, the sort of data collection industry, thought people knew about. Of course, they didn't know about it. But the bargain is uh, we give you all of these services for free. In return, you give us your data and we can use it to micro target adverts at you. Um, whether that's effective or not is another matter. But I think people are being given all uh, 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 clear information now uh, about the bargain that they've made uh, there's lots of links going around where you can look at uh, your apps on facebook what permissions you've given and start checking up on that and i think a lot of people are going to do that and a lot of people are going to be shocked at how much data they have handed over but the realm we're in now is one where the questions are about political messaging and political campaigning not just the adverts that you see i think most of us appreciate that the adverts you see are linked in some way to something that you've looked up or or something that you've demonstrated an interest in yes and this this is not new i mean those uh, uh, in that industry will point to uh, the the 2012 obama campaign for example as having been brilliant and innovative in using data uh, perhaps with much more clarity and, and transparency but still it, it was hailed as a, a great innovation then uh, and it's now being seen as something far more dangerous, far more powerful, far more done in the shadows. And I think uh, uh, regulators have, have, in particular have failed to catch up with that. We've mm. seen uh, investigations in this country from the Electoral Commission and the uh, Information Commissioner. But they are, they are seen, I think, as having been a bit slow off the mark on this. What do you think Facebook's going to do now? Clearly, its shares you know, continue to slide. Can, can it do something to sort of bring back trust? I think it's difficult. I I think they're probably going to rely on the fact that people, there is still a huge amount of inertia. We're talking about this. There's a lot of publicity about this. People in the background uh, are going on using Facebook services. Uh, It's still earning huge amounts from advertising. Uh, I think they will hope uh, that this will die away. But there's now huge pressure, political pressure, in particular on Mark Zuckerberg, who's been notably absent over the last few days, to actually come forward and and give some clear explanation of what's been going on and what's going to change. Rory Kathleen-Jones, thank you very much.